Hey guys, welcome back to the uh, channel here, GT Machine here. We're going to do some uh, uh, actions with the P-Wiz here. I definitely I picked up one uh, P-Wiz off somebody. And uh, hopefully uh, we're going to reset the, relearn the clutches in the dual clutch transmission here in the Panamera. And hopefully that fixes uh, the transmission issue. Either that or we're just going to break it. So we're going to find out one way or the other. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, go ahead and uh, fire up my tablet. This is a Surface... Uh, uh, Pro tablet that's got a uh, Windows 11 on it and also has a uh, P was on it. So we'll go ahead and uh, get everything booted up here. I've already tested out, uh, it hooks up to the car fine, no problems. So as things got cheaper, uh, it was definitely uh, worth it to get uh, P was. And if this fixes the transmission issues or makes it a lot better, hopefully, it'd definitely be worth it. So go ahead and uh, let it uh, boot up and log in. <laughs> it just takes a little bit here to load. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, could load a little bit faster with uh, maybe Windows 10 on, but this has got Windows 11. Uh, it's fine for me, but so I'm not using it as a home computer. This is just for uh, PWIS and for all the Porsche information. So go ahead and uh, let it sit there for a minute and make sure everything's good to go. And we'll go ahead and uh, launch PWIS. There you go. As you can see, it's right there. So this has got the latest and greatest uh, 42.950.025. It'll do... Uh, Pretty much everything from 2024 and down and some 2020-25s. Uh, but that's fine for me. Uh, the newest car I have is a 2018. And most of my uh, buddies and friends have stuff that isn't brand brand new. So everything will be good. And it also has uh, engineering mode 38.250 on as well. well. What's going on here? Oh, it's just loading the settings. Must have been open before I shut it down. I haven't played around too much with Windows 11, so... So here, we'll move this uh, update out of the way. Also, you'll see some of these copies. You'll see license update required. This has 38.877 days for validation. That's really far out, more so. All right, so here's the adapter. This is the adapter right here. Works just fine. And then this is the Wi-Fi version. I don't really need that. I'm fine with just hooking up. So and then there's just a standard uh, USB to micro USB cable. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this uh, plugged in and get it set up for the test and the calibration and we'll go ahead and go from there. All right, we got the uh, cable hooked up to the OBD port there. Um, got it connected to the computer. Um, in order to run this test, uh, you got to have uh, the brakes depressed. So what I've done there is got a pry bar, a block of wood, and a towel to protect the seat. Ran the seat a little forward and put uh, adequate pressure on the brake pedal. And then we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. So we want to go to diagnostics. And then now it's trying to connect to the car. There you go. And it looked up and picked up the 971, which is this. So hit continue. It'll go through and pull everything up. Just give it a minute here. Oh, maybe he's mad at me. <laughs> mm, 
doesn't seem to be wanting to do much. So we're going to go ahead and exit the program and restart it just to make sure everything's okay. All right, click on diagnostics. Let it pick up the car. <clears throat> now I found the car again, hit continue. I'll just give it a minute to wait. All right, there it goes. See the blue circle? It's moving. There it goes. So see there, it go it's going through the test for diagnostics. Maybe the tester's got to be hooked up before you launch uh, the PWIS to this. So scanning everything. There it goes. Yep, so that was just it. So just make sure your, your uh, adapter's plugged in the computer before you launch PWIS. Now it's initializing the connection. It's loading all the control unit data. This just takes a little, a little bit to load all this. I've been through it before to make sure everything works. All right, there it goes. It's launching everything. Since this is a highly optioned car, there's a lot of modules and everything in here. So it's going through everything and checking everything out. All right, so there's all our control units. So we need to go down and find the PDK for the transmission. There it is right there, almost all the way at the bottom. Transmission electronics PDK. So click on that, go down here in the corner, hit next. It'll go ahead and connect to the, to the control unit. <laughs> Create a valve file. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that just to make sure everything's done correctly. Let's go ahead and it's creating the uh, vehicle analysis log. This will take a little bit of time, so we'll go ahead and uh, come back once it's done. All right, it finished creating the valve file. We'll go ahead and uh, go to maintenance and repairs for this. What you want to click on is calibration double clutch transmission. Next. And then what we want to do here is calibration transmission without part replacement because we're not doing any parts replacement. And it says calibration transmission without parts replacement can be performed if there are shift quality complaints, which we definitely have them. So is there a shift transmission shift quality points? Yes, there is. Hit next. Go ahead and select all these. Make sure they're all selected. Hit next. All right, so now we got to switch ignition off for 30 seconds. All right, it told me to switch it on, but it said do not press the brake, so I had to release my brake setup. And so it says leave it on for 10 seconds. And it says wait five seconds. Switch ignition off again. Now it's wait 10 seconds with ignition off. Sorry about the glare. All right, now it says switch ignition on again. Uh, ignition's on, it says wait 10 seconds. The shift rods are calibrated as the first step. So hit next. So we gotta check all this stuff, so we gotta run it so I'll go ahead and start the car and press the brake all right so we put the parking brake on engines idling transmissions in neutral turn the HVAC completely off and the 
brake pedal's on. Make sure the fluid's up to the correct temperature, which it is. So we're gonna go ahead and hit start. And we can have knocking or jerking during this process. And it's just gonna go through and check everything. I can hear it actuating everything. Oh, get a little clunky clunky. So it's going through the calibration process. So I can hear it moving shift rods and doing all kinds of funky things. So it's either gonna fix this or not improve anything or completely bust the transmission. We're doing something. So it's just gonna go through the process and we'll come back. So it's going but kind of quick. We're about maybe like four or five minutes in and we're about up to 72%. I could definitely hear it actuating and doing all kinds of things with the transmission. Um, it's uh, rocked the car a couple times. So hopefully everything's working and uh, we'll have a lot better shifting transmission after this. Um, I have seen somebody do this on a Boxster and they said it was a night and day difference after it was done. So I'm hoping uh, my problem in normal mode is gone. If not, then hey, I calibrated it, it was worth a shot. Nope, oh, oh, we're jumping way up here. Here we go. 86%, 88, 93. Whoa, we're going really fast now. 95, 98, 99, 100. Okay, so now we need to release the, the brake pedal. Release the brake pedal. Now it's going to calibrate the, the clutch. So we're gonna press and hold the brake pedal again. All right, so let me go ahead and set that. This will take about seven minutes, so. All right, now it's going through the uh, clutch uh, process. It just finished the shift rods and now it's doing the uh, calibration for the, uh, the clutch. Sorry for the glare on the screen. Let me see, oh, there we go, that's better. So it says this could take up to seven minutes. Oh, 12% already. All right, so we'll go ahead and let this continue and uh, come back. So just a little side note, uh, it did hang about 25% for a little bit. You could hear a little itty bitty increase in idle. Um, the biggest thing I noticed was in watching the oil pressure, but it did finally jump from 25 to 37% and it's still running. So everything's going good. And uh, we'll come back once uh, we finish up or if there's any other uh, tidbits to share. All right, we're up to 87%, and as you see, it's raised the idles up a bit. It's going through the calibration process. Let's see if I can catch one of the knockings or jerkings it's gonna do. Mm, I don't think it's gonna do it, but we're moving along here. Oh, wait a minute, there it goes. You feel a little jerkies. I can feel a little bit. You can't, it's not gonna be able to tell in the video. Before it was a lot more pronounced, but as you see, it's going through its process. Oh, there, well, oh, I think we might be done. Switch ignition off. Wait 10 seconds. Switch ignition on and don't press the brake. Switch the ignition on. Control you over is set. Turn the ignition off. And turn it back on again. There we go. Pass. Locked, locked. There we go. Was the calibration of the transmission without part release was successful. The PDK, uh, the PDK control unit memory faulty is deleted in the next step. Calibration can can cause communication errors. So next, switch ignition off again. Now let's switch it back. We 
we should be good to go. The only fault I got is my air tire pressure light, which just came on today, which I'll fix. So everything should be good, but we'll go ahead and check the fault history. Fault memory, nothing there. So there we go. Everything's done. We're we'll going to take it for a test drive and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get a better shift quality out of this. So let me go ahead and get cleaned up and uh, we'll go in for a test drive. All right, guys, calibration's done. We're going to go ahead and for first test drive and uh, see how it is. Hopefully there's an improvement. I can already know uh, reverse is better. First to second is a little better. Hopefully it'll get uh, rid of the shifting issue first to second and then the shutter I had. definitely tell it's shifting different than before. I'm sure it's got to relearn everything. So I'm just keeping it in uh, normal mode. First and second seems a little better. I'll definitely know like during a cold start. seventh gear hope let's see if I get any shutters out of it so I'm really not feeling any shutters I'd say it seems pretty smooth uh, before the shutters were uh, really uh, prominent and pronounced in uh, about seventh gear at about 45 to 50 miles an hour and it's not doing it at all anymore I'm not gonna call it fixed yet until I drive it a couple more times but so far it seems okay um, downshifted there at about 49 miles an hour on cruise control. Normally if I keep the uh, speed about the same, it would definitely be pronounced. <clears throat> so typically my issue happened like around 1,000 to 1,200 RPMs. sitting about right about 1200 rpms right now in seventh gear I definitely don't feel it as bad as before. Uh, before it would definitely, you could feel it in the seat where it'd be like a, you could also hear it doing it and feel it, it was like a, a loud shutter. All right guys, uh, GT Machine, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe and then uh, I'll drive it around a bit and uh, do an update. Uh, thanks for watching.